You're listening to Convenience Matters, brought to you by Nax. We'll talk about what we see at stores and what the future may hold for our industry. For almost 100 years, the convenience store model is somebody drives by, sees what you have, goes inside, gets what they want. That model has dramatically changed with digital assistance of all sorts. And people find your stores in a very different way now. That's going to be the topic of our conversation today. And joining us is Lori Stillman, who is NAC's Vice President of Research and Education. So welcome, Lori. Hey, thanks for having me today. So what we're talking about today is the whole concept of how people find things is dramatically different because of the internet, because of all these personal assistants. Can you kind of set up you know, your discovery of looking at whether through research or informal or formal, how you found that we were really behind the behind everybody else in this search? Yeah, it was really born out of some work that we started a couple of years ago, and we were focused on last mile, which if you think about at the end of the pandemic, everybody was trying to stand up last mile capabilities as we saw traffic down and trying to bring the store to the doorstep. And in the midst of all of that, we, we were doing some research through our Convenience Voices platform, and this number stood out to us of the number of shoppers who were physically in a store but going somewhere else to get uh, needs met elsewhere. And so it just started us down this path of, are we focusing on the wrong end of the opportunity? And we have more opportunities to build with our existing customer base while they're in the store versus trying to take the store to the doorstep. And while both are great opportunities, in the midst of doing all of that, it just dawned on us that the convenience store offer has evolved to the point that shoppers today might not know all of the solutions that we now provide for them. And so we started looking at when I'm looking for solutions that might be beyond the traditional gas or Cokes or, or cigarettes, how am I looking for those opportunities and how are the stores showing up? So we literally pulled out an iPhone and we started saying, you know, hey, Siri, where's the nearest ice machine, propane tank exchange, coffee? And we were dumbfounded that in every one of those searches, convenience stores were not showing up in the results that were being returned. And that really is what bore out this opportunity. The video was a lot of fun because when you, when you, and, and it's just you and uh, a colleague just filming and you're standing right in front of iced coffee, asking about iced coffee. You're standing right in front of propane. So it, it's not like, well, the, the algorithm didn't quite know where you were. You were literally in a beer cave asking where the beer was and they're pointing you a mile down the street. Exactly. Uh, you know, it was dumbfounding. And I'm sure if you saw the video, you could kind of see the expression on my face because I'm literally elbow on an ATM machine being told to go to a bank five miles away, standing in the middle of a car wash and being directed to five different car washes. Probably the most mind boggling one was when I was looking at propane tank exchange, which we think is a great opportunity in this industry, drives a lot of incremental trips. The first result was wanting me to drive 45 miles to a propane distribution center. Uh, and it just shows that the offer hasn't been connected to how customers are now searching and perhaps even more importantly, discovering what opportunities exist for them to meet their needs in today's retail landscape. So in going through all of this, where, where, why do you think that is? Like, why are convenience stores kind of like these ghosts on the corner when we know that there's, you know, 148,000 plus in the United States alone? Why are we not showing up? Well, it starts with your Google business account. And if you haven't taken ownership of every single location where you have a site uh, and you've gone to Google and you've claimed that page and you've identified yourself as a convenience store retailer or gas station or pizza, you know, however you want to be primarily identified to your customer base, then you're really just hoping that all of the other comments that people might have made about your business somehow gets you to the top of that Google three pack in search results. And the reality is mm -hmm. that doesn't happen. Uh, and so if we haven't evolved how we are marketing ourselves, not just in the physical space, but taking ownership of those digital assets, which now also direct people to where we are and what we have to offer, then we're missing those opportunities to win that shopper. Yeah, and just thinking from personal experience and, and first off, you know, anybody who has kids, um, our, our kids, teenage girls will literally be looking outside the window and saying, hey, Alexa, what the what's the weather like? And it's like, the window 
outside the window might give you a good indication. Now that's that's mm-hmm. the extreme, but you know people do use those voice assistants to do everything from um, you know, watching somebody on TV. How old's that person? Whatever. But but there is a there is a real commerce application. When when I think about our our personal experiences, we live in an area with lots of restaurants nearby. We've been there 20 years, but we still on Friday nights, hey, let's try something different. And you go to one of these um, websites, Yelp or whatever, and it's like, what are the restaurants within a couple miles? And we're looking, we put in a couple things there. And, and that's how you make decisions now. You don't just get in the car and start driving and say, oh, take a right-hand turn. So as you started this journey that began more than a year ago, what were, what were some of the things that you specifically looked at in, in how do we, how do we change the concept of what's going on in our industry? Well, we started by looking at some Google analytics, just on search results in general, that really showed us what were the keywords most often being searched for. Um, and what we found was things like gas or pizza or ice or beer, they were, you know, 10 X, if not more higher than people saying, where's the nearest convenience store? Where's the nearest gas station? And as we looked at that, what we found is often our industry identifies based on the physical location, the corner we're on, the brand of gas that we sell. uh, And what customers are looking for are outcomes to immediate problems that they have. I'm out of beer. I need more. So my search is for beer. I might not be doing a branded search for the specific place that I often go to to buy that beer. I'm looking for I need beer right now or I need pizza or I need a hunting license or a lottery ticket or what have you. And so the consumer search is much more results driven, whereas how we've identified ourselves when we take the action to identify ourselves is very brand centric and often is headquarters centric, meaning there's a number of times you'll do a search and you get landed to the website. Okay. So I find a store, I go to the web. It gives me an option in Google business to go to the website for that, for that retailer. And it takes me to their corporate landing page, which pretty much makes me start right back at the beginning. Cause now I got to find the locations tab. Now I got to remember the zip code or the address of the place where I'm searching. And if it's not my immediate neighborhood, then that hasn't helped me. And I've probably wasted four or five clicks along the way, which results in frustration rather than probably a trip to the store. And when you go back to, and when you get sent back to the, the landing page and it's after 5 PM, it says closed right now. And mm-hmm. I, if I recall correctly, one of your uh, presentations uh, a while back, you know, the, the two, two of the search items that jump to the top are the, the phrase near me and open. And correct. You got to have those two. If somebody's going to even continue any further. Yeah, it's really about accurate data, right? So you can have the listing, you can have a Facebook page, but if when search results find you, your store address isn't accurate or the cross streets that you're on or your phone number or God forbid your hours of operation have changed. And let's face it, many retailers have had to change store operating hours just because of what's happened post pandemic with labor situation, et cetera. So If that information isn't accurate and that customer has actually taken action and driven to the address only to get there and find the store closed, wow, even probably more damage than not showing up in the first place. So it's a bit that's a big undertaking for someone on a convenient or on a company staff to take on, right, to manage this whole process of Right. You know, the the Google business side and making sure that, you know, everything's up to date and then social media on top of that. It's it's a huge, it's a huge lift. It is a huge lift. Automation now enables us to make that lift very actionable because to do it right, to win search, search is very local. 90% of all search is now this near me um, specific destination search. And so again, you want the results to be relevant to the location, which means you have to have a single Google listing for every single store location. You need to have a separate Facebook listing for every store location, Yelp. So let's just say you have 50 stores. You start multiplying that by the upwards of 100 to 125 different social platforms and search platforms that customers might be looking for you on, then exponentially people just kind of cave under the magnitude of the work. And that's why we moved down the path that we did to build Thriver, which is the next new solution that allows us to put all of those localized marketing efforts on a single dashboard so that you can manage listings accuracy and where you're making a change or you're communicating a promotion or an offer that is applicable to all stores. It's a one and done 
tap versus having to go to each individual page. Reversely, if you need to deliver messages or promotions that are unique to a set of stores, perhaps all of the stores in your portfolio that carry a certain brand of gas or all of the locations you have that have a made to order offer, you can also build those groups and clusters and be able to manage that content in a much more efficient way. And uh, the, the cost to do this is it's really the opportunity cost. It's what you lose if you don't do something. And, and you know, we all know that uh, you always want to be competitive on, on certain things because if, if somebody decides to go somewhere else, you may not get them back. If somebody decides whether it's in our channel or outside of our channel, you want to keep them there and then you want to, you want to steal other people's. So in looking at this solution, Thriver, uh, we're working with this group called Soshi, which um, doesn't typically work with a lot of stores like those in our channel, particularly those with, with fewer than 50 stores. Do you want to take us through um, what Thriver means with this partnership with Soshi? Yeah, so you're right. So she is the premier localized marketing platform firm that's out there. And we looked at a lot of different players in the space. Um, we realized very quickly that there were a lot of players who dealt with one discipline, meaning they were really good at helping you manage your store listings so that when you did search, you sh you, you, your likelihood to show up was much better. Or they provided opportunities to look at social so that you could manage your presence across Instagram and Facebook efficiently. Or third, reviews and reputations. Because that's the other thing that happens when someone does a search, right? If they see somebody only has a two-star rating and the last three or four comments made about the business were not positive, then they're probably going to remove that location from the, their consideration set. So we wanted a platform that allowed us to manage all three because you have to excel at all three in order to really win that Google three pack and show up in those listing results the way, you know, Apple search or Google search is going to deliver the results. And so, so she was the platform that was best at being able to bring all three of those capabilities together onto a single desktop but they didn't work with anybody in, who didn't have 50 locations or more. Uh, and as we know, in, in convenience, we have over 90,000 or fewer. Yes, 50 or fewer. Um, and so in our industry, we have more than 90,000 operators who are single store operators. That's a significant portion of the number of doors in our industry. And so we knew that that solution wouldn't be one that would allow us to get the scale that we needed to for the industry to really win convenience the way we envision it. And so we sat down with Soshi and said, what would it take? for us to be able to white label your platform, bring all of the same capabilities that someone with 50 or more stores could license directly and make that available to the industry. And so that's what we built and we've partnered with them. They've been tremendous partners in helping us bring the solution for the industry forward. Nax has taken on the investment required to enable any operator, whether they have one location or 20 or 500 to be able to have the same capabilities to be able to manage search, to be able to build solutions if you don't have any today, because we know there's a lot of retailers today who haven't been managing their presence. And so this allows them to jump in, build those solutions and do it very cost effectively. So you guys had a great presence at the next show. Um, and what was, so how was, I know you had some demos and stuff and the SOC team was on there as well. You know, what was, what was the retailer feedback when they saw this actually in action? It's one thing to talk about it, but it's another thing to actually see how it all works. The feedback was pretty overwhelming. As a matter of fact, I was talking to a retailer yesterday that we had been in discussions with even prior to the show. And I asked him like, hey, I didn't see you at the show. Why didn't you stop by? He said, every time we came by the booth, all of the demo stations were full. Mm. And we had so many other appointments that we knew we would be talking to you later. And really it was, you know, conversations from retailers who started out saying, why do I really need this? I know my customer, I know my corner. And it's like, it's not your corner or your customer. It's the customer that is driving by you and doesn't know what your offer is. It's the customer who doesn't realize that your offer has evolved and that there's other needs that they have that you can now meet that you need to be able to show up when they're looking for those solutions. And so I think the overwhelming feedback was, A, 
wow, didn't realize that the marketplace has changed to the point that we are losing business by not being as available to our cu- customers in the digital landscape as we are physically. That was a big takeaway for a lot of retailers. And then quite frankly, when we started talking to them about the investment that would be required for them to actually enable the capability, they were pretty dumbfounded. And so, you know, I'll cut to the chase and say that for a retailer who wants to start to win in the digital landscape, the investment is $300 a store a year, mm-hmm. right? So we're talking $25 a month. And I think everybody listening knows all the other things that they're probably investing in at store level that's far exceeds that. And I tell folks, simply the margin that you can make on selling one incremental cup of coffee a day, we're talking margin, we're not talking retail price, will more than pay for the solution. And I think when we think about the value of the offer and the average transaction that convenience store operators have today, that is not a heavy lift. That's selling, you know, maybe one or two more food service items Mm -hmm. a week. Um, And so how do we win this business that is leaking to other competitors, both physically and digitally, um, just simply by showing up and being available where customers are looking for us? Well, it struck me what you were saying uh, back a few minutes ago, talking about um, the idea of ratings. And you know, we all have our favorite restaurants. And, and you know, ours, we looked up on Yelp, and it latest review had it something like at three and a half stars. And you started reading these reviews, and it's like, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and my first reaction is, wow, it must have gone downhill. And then my wife says, we were there last week, mm-hmm. and it was great. But it just kind of... There's the factual stuff that that people see online. Are you open? Are you near me? Do you have this? And then there's a perception things that also can linger. And if somebody else is controlling your brand by saying, oh, well, so-and-so was rude to me, or the parking lot was this or that, whether it's true or whether it's not true, these perceptions kind of sit back there and, and it's difficult to define but I would imagine it colors whether somebody decides that that you're going to be where they go just because the, the ratings are just as important as do you have it? Are you close to me? Are you open? Listen, unmanaged social media can be the biggest mm-hmm. contributor to, to lost business than I, than I think anything else that's out there. Uh, 70% of people today turn to social media when they have customer care issues. of them make purchase decisions that are influenced by what they read that others have written about a business or an experience. And probably the the most challenging one, Jeff, kind of to your point, 63% say they shop elsewhere if they simply don't like what, what people are saying about a brand on their social page. And so to me, it's like, you can't afford not to do this. Um, And let's face it, people are going to have bad experiences. And I think we've seen time and time again, brands who just ignore it and just let it sit on their social page. Uh, and then there's brands who I think have a great control on it. And we have some in our industry who do it very well that, you know, they say, hey, Jeff, we're, we're really glad you stopped by. We're really disappointed to hear that that experience was less than satisfactory. Um, please, you know, DM me at such and such address and we would like to make it right. We'd like to give you an opportunity to, you know, give us another try. And we're not talking about, you know, free gas for a year. We're talking about maybe giving them an incentive for a free cup of coffee or 50% off uh, a food service item the next time they're in a store just to give them a reason to come back. And I'll tell you the other thing that as we've started really exploring this space, our goal was really about helping us win more trips, building bigger baskets. But I'll tell you one of the other things that we've uncovered that makes this even more valuable to operators is potential employees who are looking for jobs and want to understand what they can expect when they work at a location will look at social media and see what other people are saying about their experiences in that store. And if customers are are raving about how great their experience is, then that employee is going to immediately say, hey, that's a place I want to work. But if they're raging customers and they're not happy with the experiences, then they're going to say, hmm, maybe something's going on there. Maybe I'll look at another employer. So this can also be a great weapon in helping us really address some of the labor challenges by sharing not just to prospective customers, but to prospective employees what the brand experience is all about. Yeah, there's been talk about just uh, taking away the negatives associated with a job. And, and, you know, the classic example is... um, 
what was that movie? Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That guy has to wear like a chicken suit and it's demeaning. Um, but you know, we've done surveys where we've asked customers or employees, what would, what would you like in a job? And of course, benefits are always at the top. But there's one that is not related to pay and not related to benefits and this makes me happy. And if you are proud of your job, um, you're not taking off your your work outfit as soon as you leave. You might be going to you know a barbecue wearing that. It's like, hey, that's cool. And it's like, why is that cool? Because of social media, because of this, because of and it all feeds together. So uh, sounds like a pretty powerful narrative. Yeah, I, I, I truly believe in today's landscape, retailers, any business cannot afford to not manage and develop a very compelling digital presence. It is just the way in which today, all of us are discovering and searching uh, for the needs that we have and the experiences that we're looking for. And many times we discover things we didn't even know we were looking for, and it prompts us to go give something a try. So for those who are interested in searching about Thriver, how might they do so? It's very easy. You can go to convenience.org forward slash Thriver, Thriver is T H R I V R, but if you go to that landing, Thriver without Thriver the e. without the e, um, <laughs> that will bring you right to the landing page to tell you all about the solution, give you a chance to watch a video to see how it works, uh, and, and hopefully learn how you can bring um, your stores into the digital landscape in a compelling way that matters to your shoppers. Uh, and of course, you know the 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 taking the E off is very much the the personality of tech Mm -hmm. companies today. It's also very much the misspelling is very much in line with our industry, which uh, is very much known for misspelling. Uh, Simpler taking words out of there. So Thriver without the E, uh, check it out uh, for less than a incremental cost of a cup of coffee um, and grow your business. So, Lori, thanks for joining us. Uh, We expect to be talking more about how it's going with Thriver, which just launched uh, at the NAC show. And um, thanks for joining us today. Convenience Matters is brought to you by NAC and produced in partnership with Human Factor. For more information, visit convenience.org.